Well, good morning, everybody. We're at the gate to get unloaded, and we've got issues this morning. My batteries are dead. I shut the truck off overnight. I woke up, my, my bunk heater was going, my engine heater was going, so the engine's actually warm. But I went to go start the engine and I don't have enough juice to turn over the engine. Though the engine is warm. So somewhere I had a drain overnight and I lost all power of my batteries. Oh, and there's two guys lined up behind me already, at least two or three, so they're probably gonna jump in front of me. I called a tow truck to come boost me already. It'll be quick once he gets here because I've got the two, uh, I've got the two knobs uh, just underneath my hood that connect to my battery, so he can just connect his cables right onto that. Uh, so he doesn't have to open up my battery box or anything. But hopefully that'll work, and hopefully he gets here quick because my engine is cooling off as we speak. And once this engine cools off too much, it'll be much harder to crank it over. They said he's on his way right away, so hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. Not the start to the day that I wanted. It's been... That kind of month. I don't know why. I've never had problems with my batteries before. Oh, but I woke up and uh, beneath here, I have this here, right? It's a little cigarette lighter plug, right? Is it focusing on it? Of course not. But that shows me my battery voltage. And it's showing me, it keeps bouncing between 11 and a half and 10.8. And it was flashing at me, which isn't good. That's not a full battery, we want to be closer to 12, right? You'd think it would still turn over with 11.6, but not enough juice. So hopefully he'll get here soon. Blue, I don't like your attitude. I don't like your attitude lately. So they came out tiny tow truck. All, I told them, all I need is just a bit of juice to turn the engine over. The engine's already warm. Uh, it shouldn't take much. I just don't have quite enough to get the engine going. I'm like, okay, so they sent out a pickup truck, like a, a little uh, tiny tow truck, right? For cars. Uh, I had my battery posts beside my engine exposed already. My hood opens. So all he had to do was click, click, connect his cables. Real easy. Right out in the open. Vroom, engine started up right away. I'm like, all right, less than 30 seconds. Like, no more than one minute. The truck was running. He had his cables already rolled up. He was ready to go. So then the bill came. Uh, you guys want to take a stab at how much the the bill was for that boost? We have to remember that this is a heavy diesel truck, so it's in a different class. Apparently, I learned this today. Base rate is 150 U.S. dollars just for them to come and boost me. On top of that, for them to drive across town, there's a $20 fuel surcharge, and then taxes. So in total, that boost that took less than a minute from a pickup truck that's, you know, made for towing cars, like a little tiny tow truck, 177 US dollars. It came out to 246 Canadian dollars. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second. It took less than a minute. But because I'm classed as a heavy truck, I get charged more. Even though it's just as easy to boost me as it is to boost a car. You just connect the battery. It's pretty simple. Connect, connect. That's all he had to do. And then he drove away. In a car tow truck. Like, they didn't even send the heavy wrecker out. Like, usually that charge would uh, mean that they sent the wrecker out, right? Because it's more expensive to run the big wrecker. Big diesel fuel, big costs. Of course. Why don't I set the little pickup truck out? So that was a little disappointing and uh, a bad way to start the day, but let's try not to let that uh, get me down all day. Lesson of the day things are expensive. 
my friend Trevor in front of me here, he was telling me how he just had a bunch of engine problems. So he, he had a new engine installed in his truck, and then they had a bunch of problems after they installed it. And they took months getting it like, to running properly. And then recently he just had his engine light pop on as well, just like mine, except mine was an easy fix compared to his. Uh, his, they replaced a whole bunch of stuff that was on warranty, thankfully, but his time's not on warranty, right? But a whole bunch of stuff didn't fix the problem. And then they checked all the wiring. Wiring was corroded. So they replaced all the wiring that fixed the problem for a while. And then the engine light came back on. And then he's had to get that looked at again. So he's had a bunch of issues too. I've had some pretty minor issues compared to a lot of drivers out here. A lot of them have had it a lot worse. But uh, that is the state of trucking. I love my job. I love what I do. But some days are really not so good. So this day started off not so good. But let's make the rest of it good. Hopefully by the time we get in there... Uh, my batteries will have enough charge that I can shut the truck off. If not, I'm just going to make sure someone has cables around here and I can get a boost before I go. But one more thing on the list of things to worry about, right? So I'm empty now. I have a coffee and I'm ready to head out. My next load is in Bemidji. About an hour and 45 minutes from here or so. Uh, my loading appointment is this afternoon and it's 9 a.m. So I'm gonna see if they can get me loaded a little bit early. That'd be nice. So I learned some lessons today. First of all, <laughs> the guys here are so nice. In Brainerd, where I unload all the time, they know me and they know my name and everything. I come in here all the time, they're great guys. And uh, Turn left. oh, calm down, Karen, hold on, I'm not even moving. She's already yelling at me. So I go in there, I, I let them know. So uh, my uh, batteries, were dead overnight and I'm just charging them up like you want me to idle it a bit outside to charge it up or or come inside if I come inside if they don't start to you booster cables he's like oh no no you're good we'll get you going we'll get you going and you know what next time just come in and ask me I'll come out and boost you hindsight's 2020 I guess I should have just gone in gone in and talked to them I just didn't want to bother them I figured man they're probably busy getting ready for work they just got here in the morning I don't want to get them to come out here and boost me so uh that would have been cheaper but lesson of the day is have a pair of booster cables in your truck with you all the time trucker josh didn't do that trucker josh wasn't prepared trucker josh knew better trucker josh is very bad it's a bad boy i have these uh i have booster cables at home in my shop and i thought many times i should put those in the truck i should put those in the truck i should put those in the truck and i never did because if I had them here with me, my friend Trevor, who was in the truck behind me, right or in front of me there, uh, he, was, he was here at the same time, he would have gladly boosted me if I had uh, cables. If I didn't have cables. So that is a $250 Canadian or $177 American lesson that I can teach you right now so that you don't have to spend that money when you have dead batteries in the morning. Have a set of booster cables with you, long ones, so that they can reach a long ways, right? And before you go and spend the money, you know, chances are there might be a kind trucker or a kind friend or a kind person around you who will give you a quick boost. I would do it if someone came to me and said, hey man, my batteries are dead. You mind giving me a boost? I got cables. I just need a little bit of juice from you. Of course, I've been there. This isn't my first time having dead batteries in the morning. I've, it's happened to me many, not many times. It's happened to me before. Uh, one that sticks out in my mind is in uh, Kamloops, British Columbia, a while ago when I was driving that Volvo. But it's happened to me before. And uh, when someone needs your help with something like that, it's super simple. Let me give him a helping hand. So uh, that's my uh, lesson for you guys. Get a pair of long, like a long set of booster cables with long cables so that they can reach your truck and way out past your truck to the next truck. The longest ones you can find, the longest ones you can store in your truck. I'm gonna go and get a new pair as soon as I can. I have a short pair at home, which probably wouldn't be too long. The truck would have to be right up beside me, but if you're gonna buy a new set, get a nice long set. That's your lesson for today. That one's free. So I'd like to give a special shout out to the new members of the channel. Uh, so I've had memberships over on Patreon for about 10 years. And it's been very disconnected from the channel. It's been very hard to merge the two. And it's been very difficult sort of my, on my end to keep track of it and everything. YouTube opened up this membership program, which is way easier on my end to deal with 
than Patreon. So I'm moving all the memberships over from Patreon to YouTube and I'm making it available to you guys here too. There's a basic membership and a, and a premium membership, but the videos will always be free to watch for you guys here, just the same. Nothing will change for any of you here. Uh, memberships, a basic membership will get you a little, uh, your highlighted comment. It'll have a little badge beside your name so that your comment sticks out. I definitely see those. It comes into a different section. Like on my phone when I'm reading the comments, your comment then comes into a different section and I read those uh, first, they stick out to me. And uh, premium membership, is uh, you get early access to all my videos as soon as they get on the internet. It could be a few days early, a day or two, or even a week early at some times. Uh, whenever I have it ready and put together, you get to watch it right away before everybody else. Uh, you also get members only content, the uh, stuff that I make just for the members of the channel, just sort of like over on Patreon. So Patreon sort of, uh, like I said, it was too disconnected. It's too hard to keep up with. We're gonna have members only content here as well, on top of my regular videos as well. The cost of it, you'll see down below. If you click the join button, you can read all about it there. It's $2.99 for a basic membership. That's Canadian. And for the premium membership, that's where you get the early access and members only videos. Uh, that's $4.99 Canadian or $3.70 a month American. That's like less than a cup of Starbucks a month. So maybe like a cup and a half or two cups of coffee a month and uh, you get access to all the, the videos early, members only content, and your comments stick out to me as well so that I, I see them first above, uh, uh, before all the other ones. I see all your comments still, don't worry, keep leaving me comments down below. Just if you are a member, it gives it a little tag there and sends it into a different folder for me on my phone here. But I'd like to give a shout out to the members that have moved over from Patreon to here and also to the new members who have, who have joined already. So thank you to you guys. Uh, this was all in the first day. Uh, Tail Dragon 68, Russell Palmer, Dan Rice, Mr. Video Dude 709 Vlogs, Scott Young, Sir Yogi 42, Elizabeth Giesbrecht, Bandit, uh, Power Chair Trucker, Shannon Talley, Thomas, um, Goodmanson, Good Goodmanson. I'm sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. Uh, Jake Hendricks, Derek Bremer, uh, Bremer, sorry, uh, Larry Hawkins. Jack, Moses, Ronnie D, and Craig Raffle. So a big thank you to you guys for joining. I invite all the rest of you to go check it out if you want to, it's down below. You'll be hearing about it in all my videos. If not, you can watch the videos just like before. Nothing will change for you. Let's get out there on the road. Let's go get it. Wise Road, CR 49. Mississippi River. Up here in Minnesota, this is where it starts, right? Somewhere around here. It's already a big river here. I don't go this direction that often. I'm sort of taking the shortcut to Bemidji from Brainerd, going straight north from Brainerd. We're going to turn on to County Road 49 here right away. Let's hope I don't regret this.
they are expecting me. That's how I know where to park and what to do. I don't have to go into the office, they say. Just wait in the truck and they'll be out here. I like that. It's nice and warm in the truck. I like that option. Let's wait and see. Still nervous about turning my truck off now. I'm just gonna let it go. Uh, it's still pretty cold outside. It's about minus 20 Celsius. One second here, my American friends. What is minus 20 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 20 degrees Celsius is equivalent to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. It's minus freezing outside. So we're going to leave the truck going, running until we get back. Probably until I can get it back into my shop so I can test the batteries, see what's going on. I've never had my batteries go dead overnight just from having my bunk heater on. I've left my bunk heater on for 24 hours before and then run my engine heater for two hours to warm up the engine and then started it up no problem with plenty uh, with having my cooler running in here and my phone charging I've always been good until now so somehow the cold got into my batteries now and uh, caused problems for me this morning $250 still haven't told my wife that one yet <laughs> she'll know by the time you see this but <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's two hundred and fifty dollars. Gone into the wind, into someone's pocket. I still can't believe that. That guy had a pickup truck, and it took him ten minutes to get to me. Twenty-two dollar fuel surcharge for ten minutes of driving to get to me, and another hundred and fifty dollars U.S. just to click, click his cables onto my battery posts. Click, click. Thirty seconds. Turned it like immediately as soon as the power was connected to my truck. Cranked it over, started up. $177 US. <laughs> what can you do other than laugh at that, right? That is just, oh. But then I talked to the guys inside. Oh man. And they warned me, they're like, oh shoot, man, if we had known, we would have told you not to call them. I'm not cold. You're cold. So here's my load. Rough cut, four by four, hardwood, no tarp. Nicely tied down, ready to rock and roll. Gonna do one walk around here, make sure I haven't forgotten anything, haven't left any of my equipment on the trailer bed or anything. Everything looks good. I tied it all down. The bands around the wood and the bundles are all still intact. None of the dunnage is loose. Okay. I don't know about you. I'm starting to get a little chilly. I'm gonna go sit in the warm truck. So we're taking this up to Winnipeg. Somebody in Winnipeg wants this good hard American lumber. This hard American wood's going to Canada. I'm gonna bring it there to Winnipeg and then tomorrow morning after I deliver this I have a reload waiting for me. I believe it's some sort of steel. Uh, that is being delivered into Saskatchewan the following week. So I'll tie it down Bring it to our yard, nice secure yard. Leave it there, go home for a reset, and uh, we'll get going. So I'm filming this on a Thursday, so tomorrow will be Friday when all this is happening. Go home for Saturday, then half of Friday, and then Sunday morning, I'll head out again, get into Saskatchewan, deliver into near Langbank, Saskatchewan. Been there quite a few times. And we'll see what's after that. I'll we'll start the week off with a bang, and hopefully we can make up for some lost revenue.
Flying J in Headingley, which is on the west side of Winnipeg. It's just around the corner from where I have to deliver this wood. This wood's going up to the northwest side of Winnipeg. So I can just take Canada away. Oh, look at that cop sitting there on the left. Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, there's not even anybody in there. Oh, it's a trick, it's a decoy. Well, good thing I wasn't speeding either way. Still got me to look down at my gauges. <laughs> We have about four hours, a little under four hours to get up to Winnipeg. It's not that far. I should have everything delivered and my next load loaded by around about noon tomorrow. My loading appointment is 10 a.m. So I have to be empty and over there on the west side of Winnipeg near uh, Oak Bluff. By 10, I'm guessing we'll have myself loaded and ready to go before noon. So I should be home at a decent time tomorrow. We'll see what happens. I mean, I think we talked about this last night, right? The plan never goes according to plan. That was true again this morning when I woke up and couldn't start my truck. Now I gotta go test my batteries. Why did they get drained? Was it just the cold weather? Was it a fluke accident? Like. Are the connections not clean? I just had it serviced like two weeks ago, so they, they cleaned everything off. Would have tested my batteries. I don't know, must have just been like that cold night. They didn't like it. Timmy's in the morning then. And there's space to park at the back here. So that works for me. Hopefully everybody's taking up. Oh look there, we already got two guys taking up four spots. That's that's nice. As soon as there's a little snow on the ground covering up the lines, people forget how much space they need. Like, look at that. Could have fit another truck in there easily and they parked a little nicer, but. Pay attention to where you're parking, folks. Don't take up more space than you need. Others of us that would like to park and sleep too, please. We park right here beside this Western Star. Who's also taking up two spots. <laughs> Oh, well, good thing it's not too busy yet, right? But it's going to fill up tonight. That guy is stuck. He can't back up because that little, little, uh... Sorry, tongue twisted right now. At the back of his trailer there, his extra set of axles. See how they're jackknifing on him so he can't back up? 
Why can't I think of the name for that right now? I know that. You guys will get in my comment section and let me know. Those axles right there. The extra ax axle that I see, they're jackknifing, so he can't back up very much further, but he can't go forward either because uh, I guess he's going slightly uphill. He's got a heavy load. I mean, honestly, what can I do to help him at this point? I can't pull him out with my truck and trailer. I might damage my truck or trailer doing that. He could call a tow truck. I had to call one this morning. It was expensive. Uh, he's trying, I don't know if he doesn't have tire chains, but he's using chains from that he uses, that goes in to secure his loads, like wrapping them around his tires. That could damage some stuff, but I mean, if that works, it works, right? You can get some kitty litter or sand, put that underneath your tires. That would probably be his best bet right now. They do sell it inside the store right there. So what I would do if I was him, instead of, oh, is he gonna move? Is he gonna move? Oh, no, he, same thing. Instead of kind of messing up my tires with the, the load chains, I would just go inside, buy a bag of kitty litter, and throw that in front of my wheels and underneath my wheels and see if that would give me traction. But who knows, maybe he's tried that already. I think he just got out. Yeah, I figured he'd be able to do it. He was rocking back and forth like six feet already. I, I figured he'd get it. Right on. I was about to put the camera down and run out there and see if there was something I could do. So he's, he got out. Didn't even take him that long. Well, less than, less than 10 minutes there. That's the kind of driver you want on your team. Problem solving in all weather conditions. Right on. So thanks for watching today, everybody. Uh, it was a fun day. Every day, every day is fun. We are not going to have battery issues tomorrow morning. It is really cold tonight. It is down to about minus 22, minus 23, so the truck's gonna stay on. Uh, I'm not risking everything freezing up overnight again. And then I'll get my batteries tested uh, as soon as I can, I guess. Hopefully we don't have any further issues. At least there's no blizzards today, right? Hopefully there's no blizzards tomorrow. The plan for tomorrow is just to go down the road, unload this lumber, come back pretty much right here in Oak Bluff, like right in the same neighborhood where I'm staying at, pick up my next load and just go home. But I can't deliver it till Monday anyways. So thanks everybody. Again, shout out to my members out there. Really appreciate it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Please be safe out there.